I'm Matt Smith, today on Upfront. Wisconsin's immigration debate, Republicans traveling to the southern border. Our United States government is being used as a human trafficking operation. Marches planned in Milwaukee. The cruel policies, the racist policies, anti-immigrant policies. The White House this weekend facing growing pressure over a pandemic era border policy, new developments and the local reaction. Plus, Attorney General candidate Adam Jarko is here. The big issues and that tweet calling a state Supreme Court justice the biggest electoral disappointment in his lifetime. And Tommy Thompson one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I wanted to. Oh, God, did I ever. The decision to stay on the sidelines and that meeting with former President Trump. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Smith. The debate over a pandemic border policy is intensifying this weekend from the federal courts to even some Wisconsin Republicans and a candidate for attorney general all making a trip to the southern border. Up to 2,000 pounds of, of marijuana in one load. Do they even bring marijuana anymore since fentanyl? Hardly always? ever. Hardly ever because marijuana is legal here in the state of Arizona. Congressman Tom Tiffany joins us from Manaqua. Congressman, good to see you. Welcome back to Upfront. It's good to be here, Matt. First, walk me through where did you go this past week and what did you see? Yeah, I went down to Yuma, Arizona to the border, which has been one of the real hot spots here over the last two months for Ill illegal immigration into the country. And uh, the numbers really are staggering. Uh, we got a chance to see where the border wall was incomplete, people rolling across the border. And of course, the um, Border Patrol just passing them on into the United States where they go all over the United States. Striking thing for me was that um, I was down here almost two years ago under the previous administration. We had made real progress, things largely under control, state, local, and federal officials working together real good. That's all fall and apart here uh, since January of last year. Congressman, to those who say these trips from Wisconsin representatives is just a political op and you should be here in Wisconsin focusing on issues to Wisconsin, you say what to them? Oh, it's, it's part of what we do. Foreign policy and um, uh, just national security, that's part of what we do in Congress. And that's what's in jeopardy at this point. When you see, what was it last year, 23 people with known terrorist ties came into America and how many came uh, were allowed into the country that we did not even interdict. Congressman, did you hear of any evidence of, of direct correlations between either people or drugs from the border making its way actually into Wisconsin? Yeah, I had a great meeting with Sheriff Mark Lamb. He uh, is the sheriff in Pinal County. Um, Interstate 10 runs through his county. He talks about how those drugs, fentanyl and methamphetamine in particular, they come in Arizona's front yard and they end up in our backyard up here. And uh, if you talk to any sheriff across Wisconsin, they'll tell you about the fentanyl and methamphetamine that is killing people. Congressman, I want to talk about the growing debate over Title 42. I'm going to get your reaction in a minute, but first, the latest developments. Growing tensions this weekend, Axios reporting the Biden administration is now considering delaying its repeal of Title 42 as the White House faces growing backlash now even from some Democrats. This local report from the border near Texas this past week. Families are running to see if they can get on the bus. They are desperate to get out of this tent city. 2,000 migrants who've been expelled after trying to cross the U.S.-Mexico border now live in this giant tent city in Reynosa, Mexico, all waiting for Title 42 to be dropped. The controversial policy was enacted in March 2020 under the Trump administration, citing the pandemic. The authority comes from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and dates back to a World War II era public health law, which allows the government to turn away migrants entering the U.S. and denies them the chance to seek asylum. Federal officials say about 1.7 million migrants have so far been expelled. The restrictions are now set to end May 23rd. And federal officials say they're bracing for an influx of migrants, as many as 18,000 a day. All right, Congressman, so the White House seems to indicate and argue that keeping Title 42 in place will allow for less immigration enforcement. The White House saying lifting it is going to actually allow for proper processing of migrants. Yeah, they should go talk to the Border Patrol and other officials down on the southern border. They're bracing 
for just an onslaught. I mean, it's been bad enough. We've seen unprecedented numbers um, since January 20th of 2021, when Joe Biden took away many of the controls that were in place. Title 42 is basically the only thing holding back. They are anticipating maybe doubling tripling or even quadrupling the number of people that are going to be coming across our southern border. It will be a wide open border. While there's a little bit of controls right now, not much, there's a little bit, there will virtually be none. And the people in the Yuma sector with the Border Patrol, they highlighted that for us. They have met with the uh, police chief in Yuma and said, we may be releasing people into the city of Yuma that we can't handle anymore. Homeland Security officials ha have said that they're beefing up CBP and ICE officials to deal with this expected influx. What did you hear about that during your trip? And do you have faith in their ability? No, the Biden administration has made it very clear. We're going to continue running the largest human trafficking operation, perhaps in the history of the world. Our United States government is being used as a human trafficking operation at this point, at least complicit in that. And if you talk to the Border Patrol, they'll tell you we are severely understaffed. We cannot handle this. That's what we heard down in Yuma. And the notion that they're beefing up ICE, that's just a flat out lie. You're officially, Congressman, you're officially relaunching your reelection bid tomorrow on Monday. If, if Republicans regain control of Congress, in your mind, is there any immigration reform that you could get behind and that President Biden would sign into law? You know, it's actually, that's one of the number one questions I get frequently is that, so what should be done? What's the solution? It's real easy. Let's go back to remain in Mexico. President Biden could do that tomorrow. He could resume construction of the border wall, which is uh, where it's used uh, and where it's been built is very effective and stop catch and release. And that shuts off the flow, that shuts off the pull, the incentive for these people to come into America. Are you in favor of a process that allows immigrants into the country? Oh, absolutely. Um, we should have a process. We don't have that now. In fact, um, many people that perhaps should be coming into our country at this point, they've went to the back of the line behind the illegal immigration that's going on in our country. Congressman Tom Tiffany, just hours back from his trip to the border. Congressman, thank you. It's good to join you today, Matt. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus is set to meet with President Biden tomorrow and push him to end Title 42. This as immigrants' rights groups are preparing for a national day of action. Christine Newman-Ortiz, the executive director of Voces de la Frontera Action, is standing by next to respond.